So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the variance inflating factor and our formal diagnostic uh, tests to detect multicollinearity on a more formal basis. So as we said uh, in a couple of videos that multicollinearity is indeed a problem uh, in the CLRM wherein uh, it's a phenomenon that happens when the assumption of non-multicollinearity is violated. Uh, and basically, multicollinearity is when your independent variables are not truly independent from the other independent variables out there. So one way for us to test whether multicollinearity exists in our model is to use what we call the variance inflating factor, or VIF for short. And it's a formal statistical approach used to determine the degree of multicollinearity. Now, how does it do that? Well, essentially what we want to do is it measures the rate of increase with respect to the variance and covariance of a JF regressor, right? So how does that, how does that go? Well, formulaically, right, uh, the variance inflating factor is just equal to one over one minus R squared of the auxiliary regression. So we discussed this concept of uh, an auxiliary regression. So this comes from the auxiliary regression, which is just a type of regression to test certain statistical properties like multicollinearity. So in this particular case, we will have multiple VIFs for each independent variable because we have one in uh, auxiliary regression for each independent variable. So, Common question is what happens to the variance inflation factor if the R squared, uh, if the auxiliary R squared is extremely high? Well, that's simple, really. It gets larger and larger. So, for example, if the R squared sub J approaches a value of one, that is a perfect fit, then obviously one minus a very near number to one would be a low number. So, uh, a one divided by a very low number becomes a high number. So VIF increases when the auxiliary R squared approaches closer and closer to one. And note that if the R squared sub J approaches one, then the VIF will approach infinity. And uh, that's bad, right? You wouldn't want a high variance inflating factor because it suggests that the degree of multicollinearity is indeed dangerous. Okay, so... What we do is we commonly assign, uh, based on the literature, a threshold value of 10 as the value of the VIF to denote dangerous multicollinearity. And uh, because of that threshold that we found out, a value of an R squared sub J equal to 90, or 0.9 rather, would suggest dangerous multicollinearity. So this is a very, very simple proof for that. So if you recall, VIF is equal to one over one, uh, oops, one over one minus R squared sub J, right? Then you're trying, uh, we know that it's a threshold of 10. So that's 10 is equal to one over one minus R squared sub J. Then uh, we simplify it by just multiplying. So that's uh, basically one minus R squared sub J is equal to one over 10. Then you transpose R squared sub J and then transpose this to the other side, you get uh, 1 minus 1 over 10 is equal to R squared sub J. Therefore, R squared sub J, that threshold level is 0.9, right? Or 9 over 10, right? 9 over 10. And it's at that level that we would suggest uh, the presence of dangerous multicollinearity, right? So this is, again, that same computation that we have here. Now, Another key concept is essentially tolerance, right? And tolerance uh, basically uses the variance inflating factor to determine how sensitive an estimator is to changes, right? And the way that we compute for tolerance is essentially one over VIF, meaning we can essentially conclude that when the VIF uh, increases, what happens to the tolerance? Well, the tolerance will decrease. So we see an inverse relationship between the variance inflating factor and the tolerance level. And uh, because we use the same threshold, right, for uh, the, the, the VIF, right, the VIF's threshold is 10. Therefore, the threshold that we have for dangerous multicollinearity in, in terms of tolerance would just be equal to, if the VIF threshold is 10, that's 1 over 10 or 0.10. So any value lower than 0.10 is, indicates very low tolerance, which means that the estimator is extremely sensitive to small changes, right? And this is just that. So a tolerance uh, 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 less than 0.10 uh, 
uh, would suggest dangerous multicollinearity because uh, when it is less than point 10, it means that VIF is greater than or equal to 10, right? Hence, we see that any tolerance is less than point 10, and this would suggest dangerous multicollinearity. And this is because on this interval, we would be dealing with a VIF of 10 and above, right? So quite simple. So case in point, the VIF and the tolerance determine the degree of multicollinearity. And furthermore, the VIF is used in computing the tolerance, and the two are likewise inversely related. Right? So if you consider this simple econometric model, say we have GPA of a college student as the dependent variable, and we have the hours of study right, that the person does, then the hours of leisure time that the person does. And lastly, say the person was in a relationship, then we also have hours spent on a date. Now, automatically, you can already smell something fishy with the model because uh, if, you were to if you were to think about it clearly, uh, the, the, the hours that you spend on a date, there's a sort of overlap of it with the leisure hours in general because oftentimes you consider them almost one and the same, right? So, uh, and that leads me, if we try and regress this using actual data, I would think that there would be multicollinearity between leisure and date time. And indeed, when you notice that, uh, the, the coefficients of leisure and daytime are as follows. And uh, the, uh, these two estimates have been found to be insignificant. Now, if you recall, when we discussed the consequences of multicollinearity, we had said that um, one of the consequences is that it leads to more insignificant T ratios. Right? And because it's more insignificant T-ratios, you can see that these two variables are insignificant. Another one, which I didn't necessarily mention, is that one uh, sort of uh, sign to detect multicollinearity is quite an unnecessarily large R-squared, as you can see here. The R-squared is more like artificially inflated to an extent. And this is something that we saw a lot in the literature when uh, we were dealing with multicollinearity. So those are two signs um, to be able to detect that. Now, if we actually compute for the variance inflation factor, uh, inflating factor and the tolerance, we see that for daytime, okay, for daytime, we have uh, noticed the VIF is extremely high. That's a 23, which is above the threshold of 10, right? And indeed the tolerance is very, very low. It's below 0.1, meaning that these two variables are highly collinear with each other and they may cause problems with our specific model formulation, right? So that's an example of uh, what, how the variance inflating factor is computed for and essentially used, and uh, also how it relates to this concept of the tolerance. In, this, uh, in the next video of the series, we're gonna discuss how we run uh, the VIF tests and the tolerance tests inside of R with an actual example. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.